iSight camera rebranded for the iPhone. New catalogs category in App Store. iOS 5.1 tethered jailbreak ready for A4 devices. AT&T and Verizon update their LTE plans. No hotspot for you on AT&T. And delays begin for new devices. It's Friday, March 9, 2012, and this is iWake. I'm Tim Chatton, and this is what's going on in the Apple world today. Before we begin today's episode, I want to remind everybody that youtube.com slash tchatton now features video versions of this podcast. Also, since today is Friday, I wanted to remind everybody about I Wake Again. I Wake Again is how you support this podcast financially. I don't have any real source of income right now, and I do this podcast full time. Doing that is time consuming, and I'm asking for your support. By signing up for I Wake Again, you are telling me that you appreciate what I do and want to see I Wake continue on for many more years to come. On another level, you get access to exclusive interviews and discussions that I have with other people about the Apple world. These interviews range from 20 minutes to hour-long or two-hour-long episodes. So great uh, great content there every Saturday to wake up to iWake yet again. Your support is needed for the show to continue on. And I'm asking for all that can to sign up for iWake again over at iWakePodcast.com slash again. Thanks for your support. And with that, let's get on to today's episode. That will be mostly follow-up from yesterday's show and won't be as long as yesterday's show, but uh, hopefully a substantial length today. So with that, let's get on to it. To begin, it appears that Apple is rebranding the iPhone back-facing camera to an eyesight camera, a name to unify the terminology Apple's dubbed the back camera eyesight and the forward-facing cameras FaceTime. Not totally unexpected, but something kind of interesting and cool to see the eyesight branding kind of take off yet again in ipad 3 news and i will call it the ipad 3 to help distinguish it from the other ipads so an ipad 3 news is a confirmation from the verge that the new ipad has one gigabyte of ram this follows the original ipad of 256 megabytes of ram followed by 512 megabytes of ram and now double that to one gigabyte of ram the beefier ram should help drive the display and provide even better multitasking Moving on to the App Store, and there are two things of note here. First up is the new category applications that can now be added to the App Store. There's a new category here called catalogs. These are for shopping catalogs, such as JCPenney or, say, Kroger or whatever you know catalog you might have. I haven't had paper catalogs in a long time, so I'm not sure what is out there these days. But it's curious to see them add this as they don't like to add uh, add categories to the app store very often so uh, this is kind of cool and just something to know and keep your eye on i am hopeful that jc penny uh, gets a catalog it'd be cool to see what ron johnson does with that in, in the mac app store news today is an update to the ibooks author app it is an update uh, that adds the ability to output retina quality ibooks i did some digging around here and found that there's really not much user interaction that has that you have to do as a user creating Retina content, there's no extra buttons, no extra things you have to do. So basically, this update adds the ability for the application itself to make your content look even better on the iPad. That is the iPad 3. Well, that's that with App Store news. But before moving on to LTE-related news, I want to first mention that the iOS 5.1 jailbreak is out for those willing to, first off, do a tethered jailbreak that is being willing to not have your battery die and not be able to restart your phone, and for those not using an A5 device. If that is you, head on over to the Dev's team website to jailbreak iOS 5.1. The site notes that the iPhone 4S, if updated to iOS 5.1, cannot be returned to prior OSs, even if backed up with SHSH blobs. I am hopeful that the full jailbreak will be ready soon, as my iPad 2 is jailbroken, and I like it that way. In LT news, as I just mentioned, we're getting on to that, is a switcheroo from both AT&T and Verizon on their plans. So what has changed here? AT&T made the right decision by going back to $30 for 3 gigabytes, rather than 2 gigabytes as previously announced yesterday. And Verizon made their iPad plans that much more attractive with a $20 1 gigabyte plan. They also removed the $80 10 gigabyte plan, but that is kind of unconfirmed at this point as a Verizon rep said that plan was still around. 
in other LTE news, and this is kind of the the cool bit of news, uh, even more so than the plans, which I'm very happy to see the change. But this is the hotspot related news and what it's like here in the United States. So here's the deal. If you go with Verizon Wireless, you'll be able to enable hotspot free of charge at any data rate plan. This is something I'd love to see happen with the iPhone. Currently, you need the top of the line data plan to use tethering. And it's cool to see this happen with the iPad at any data plan. You can be on the $20 one gigabyte plan and still tether. That's how it should be. Data is data. You don't need more data to tether. You'll just burn through what you have faster if you have tethering. So that's that. And if you go with with AT&T Wireless, uh, you won't be able to tether. They're not going to support it. Uh, according to Verizon spokesperson, uh, data plans begin at 2 gigabytes for $30 and go to 10 gigabytes for $80 and includes a mobile hotspot. The iPads have one additional option of 1 gigabyte for $20. And according to AT&T, we are working with Apple to enable this feature in the future, but we currently do not offer it. So let me get this right, at t You are quote-unquote working with Apple to enable this feature. That is a load of crap. You do not need to work with Apple to enable this feature. It is simply not a hard thing to do. Hit a check mark in your system and let the customers have this nifty feature that doesn't hurt your network because it is still a limited pool of data. Verizon is looking all the more attractive here. Their LTE rollout is further along. They have tethering and a good low-cost single gigabyte option for $20. AT&T, get your act together. You are really screwing it up big time. I'm still trying to figure out whether you can transfer an unlimited data plan to this new iPad, but uh, it's not looking good as LTE is a different technology, and they'll probably use that as the stipulation for why you cannot use your old unlimited at t iPad plan, but more on that next week. And related news with LTE is a reason LTE can actually happen on this new iPad, and that is the battery. The new battery is simply massive. According to 95 Mac, the new battery is a 42.5 watt hour rechargeable lithium polymer battery with 70% more capacity compared to the iPad 2's 25 watt hour battery. So I'm guessing here why they need to do it this is the Retina screen needs more battery life, more power, and so does this LTE chip. So the iPad 3 has this incredible battery in it that will have the same legendary battery quoted at 10 hours for regular uses and 9 hours for LTE usage. And I'm hopeful this kind of battery technology can trickle down to the iPhone and the Mac and other devices that Apple makes. And I'm hopeful that this legendary battery will actually go up to 20 hours, you know, 15 hours. It'll get even better as time goes by. As I noted with my first iPad, iPad 1, I got 18 hours of video playback with just just videos and that was really cool to see so i'm hopeful batteries continue to increase and that 10 hours is just the starting point so with that before moving on to the the delays of new hardware already showing its face is an interesting move by apple with in regards to maps and that is maps in iphoto the new iphoto app for ios uses not google maps or bing maps but rather open street map this is a free option that is an odd move for Apple. It is expected that Apple will create their own maps for iOS 6, replacing Google Maps with the different companies they have acquired over the years. So in the meantime, it looks like OpenStreetMap is what Apple is pre- preferring to use. So check it out in the iPhoto app. Now with that, let's move on to, as I mentioned, delays. It appears that certain iPad models are already being pushed back for a later delivery. The AT&T Black 64GB model, the white AT&T 16GB, and the white AT&T 64GB have all been delayed to shipping on March 19th instead of, instead of delivering on March 16th. So AT&T seems to be popular, or they just have less quantity of them. This is the very beginning of what I'm sure will be tons of delays with this new iPad as the Retina display will make this one of the most popular iPads of all time and the demand has got to be massive. 
So if you do want this new iPad and you're in love with Radio Shack or like the company, then you may want to pay Radio Shack, your local Radio Shack, a visit. They are now offering pre-orders for this new iPad through the purchase of a $50 gift card that you can put to use with the new iPad. Your name will be put on your iPad and you can pick it up and use that gift card to pay for it. Radio Shack will get the iPad day and date of Apple and is another option for those wanting this new iPad. The other product to get a delay is the new Apple TV. It now has slipped from one to two weeks, and the Apple TV has gone from a readily available product to a hot commodity. If you want to get yours, you can go ahead and order it at apple.com through their store. And finally, closing out today's show are just some remarks from John Gruber over on Daring Fireball. His post opens by quoting Tim Cook. Only Apple could deliver this kind of innovation in such a beautiful, integrated, and easy-to-use way. It's what we love to do. It's what we stand for. And across a year, you're going to see a lot more of this kind of innovation. We are just getting started. Gruber continues by saying, That was Tim Cook closing yesterday's event introducing the Retin Display iPad. Here's the thing. He was right. To pretend otherwise, you would have to put your head in the sand or some other hole. Cook remarks marks may be immodest, but they are not hyperbole. No other company could today produce something like this new iPad. Not at these prices, not at these quantities, at a worldwide scope with the content ecosystem and user experience of the iPad's quality. Apple is in a league of its own, and the iPad exemplifies just that. Two years after announcing the original iPad, Apple has produced a version that simply blows away that of the original model in every regard. It's faster, it's thinner, it feels better in the hand, it supports LTE network, and it's got a better battery life to boot. The Retina display is simply astounding to behold. Eight days from the day, they're shipping a product that two years ago would have been impossible at any price point, and they've made it look dead simple, dead easy. Nothing is guaranteed to last. The future is uncertain and the end is always near. Apple position up top. The industry may prove fleeting, but right now Apple is a secretariat at the Belmont and the company at, to a person seems hell-bent on not letting any competitor catch up. And that's Gruber. Back to me. So, yes, there is no denying for sure that Apple's created quite a workflow for getting these new iPads out the door and using their economies of scale, really, to their advantage. I can't wait to see what next year's iPad beholds us. But until then, we have this awesome Retina displayed iPad. Well, that's what's going on in the Apple world today. That will do this week for some of us, but not everybody. If you are an iWake Again subscriber, tomorrow you'll have another episode. This week's episode will include an interview I did with Dennis about the new iPad. You can become an Again subscriber by heading over to iWakePodcast.com slash again. I'll talk to Again subscribers tomorrow, and everyone else join me on Monday for another edition of iWake. Aloha. Aloha.